Okay, so what we're going to do now is to start using links to build the rest of the system up to the GUI. Um, and then once we've got the GUI, we can start building a browser and uh, carry on with the installation from there. So if you remember from the last video, um, I'd installed links and it was working. Uh, what I'm going to do before I do anything else is to um, go through the parts of the manual of the book, of the BLFS book, which include these scripts that we skipped. I sort of reserved these tabs to remind myself to go back through them again. Um, and then I'll carry on in links at this point here, chapter three, where we left off um, and do some adjustments there. I'm not gonna go through each one of these items. Um, uh, some of them, for example, uh, I think one of these um, sections here is about uh, loading microcode to fix any bugs on the silicon and the chip and the uh, CPU, sorry. Um, and that would probably be a good thing if you are keeping BLFS for a machine to use daily. Uh, or for some other serious use, you know, as a server, whether it's desktop or server. Um, but I won't be going through that. So this is more about the process of going through BLFS rather than specifically individual items. Um, so I will be skipping some of these things. I'll just be uh, doing changes, parts of the manual that would really help the process of building BLFS rather than going through the process of creating a uh, system for daily use. After all, LFS primarily is an educational tool. BLFS arguably is educational um, also as a system to use for long term. It's a bit more open-ended, BLFS is, so it's arguable um, as to what its intended purpose is or, or how you perceive its purposes. So um, I'm going to find out what part this is uh, called, get the title of this bit so I can jump to it. So it's notes on building software and it was a script towards the bottom here somewhere, find it. Oh yes, it's about stripping. All oh, right, okay, so I probably want to leave this up to the end, I think it was. So I shall do that. I shall skip over that bit. Next bit's about libtool.la file. So let me log in. Oops. And run links now because um, I'm going to have to have a browser up and a command prompt to type in, I need to use the virtual terminals and by default um, most if not all distributions come with um, standard six virtual terminals and you access them by pressing down the alt key and then F1 to F6 depending on which virtual terminal you want to access. By default the first virtual terminal is activated so that's the one on alt F1 so if I press alt F1 now you can see nothing's happening because I'm already on that virtual terminal. I'm going to put the browser on virtual terminal 5 which means I can open other terminals on 2, 3 and 4 if I need to run some other commands as root. So I'll press Alt F5 and you'll see I'll get um, a login prompt, another login prompt and so this login is in parallel to the one I've got on virtual terminal 1 which I can switch back to now. You can see it recalls what's on the screen. And if it was running a terminal, uh, sorry, running a program, that would continue running in the background while I was accessing any of the other terminals. So um, it's quite useful to have. So I've, I've logged into this. So I'll just run links, www.linuxfromscratch.org. Uh, 
and if recall if because I haven't got any certificates loaded on the machine it's going to be asking if I want to follow these um, links with certificates each time until we get the certificates installed which we will be doing very soon so beyond Linux from scratch I want to read it online select it with the arrows and press enter yes again and then if I scroll down here um, I want to read the book so it's that link there that's highlighted in yellow press enter yes to continue with those certificates and I want to look for a page that says about libtool archives about libtool archives there it is there so I press enter there so yes again for that error and I want to get to the page where the script is and you can see the script uh, traverses several screens so what I want to do is get to the first one get my mouse which has now got the GPM script running highlight the first bit as, as I said before you can you can either left click hold and drag or sometimes it might be easy just to left click at the beginning move the cursor to the end so it'll be down here right click okay it looks like Lynx is actually interpreting the mouse clicks so I'll do no there and it looks like I'll have to left click and hold so that's been highlighted I've let go when when I've when I've dragged that down now I need to go to my first virtual terminal and I can just center click this now to paste that in you can see it's put the command in there and this is the text that's um, in the rest of the web page I can now go back to the web browser press as it says press space for the next page and once again click hold down and drag make sure I get all of the last line let go of the left button move back to my first terminal my first virtual terminal center click again move back to the fifth virtual terminal press space again for the next page and then left click and drag making sure I include the whole of the last line back to the first virtual terminal center click and you can see that's copied all of that and it's run the last command the change mode command the chmod command so what I can do now is to use via to access that file to just look over it to make sure in fact I'll be even smarter and double click that save me typing it just look over it and just make sure it looks um, as it should do so if I go back to F5 and what I'm going to do is just go to the first um, screen it appeared on just look to see where the page break was where the screen break was just to make sure that looks okay so the last bit on this screen was make the minus P old uh, old LA der so I'll look for that there it is there that line there if I go back to the browser press space bar so the next line after that is a space you could see that before there was a space on this line here so an empty line and then the first line on this screen has got a comment only search directory so just, let's just see if we can see that yep there's the space and there's the comment so it looks like it's copied it all okay there's no problems there just check the end of it in fact I should check the top of it just to make sure well yeah it's got a shebang line there so that's definitely going to be the beginning I'll double check that but more importantly have we copied all of the end of the script well let's just check the top yes the first part of the script is the shebang line let's look at the last and yes we've got three nested duns there so um, back to our virtual terminal and yeah we've got three nested duns there so that looks like that's copied successfully I don't need to make any changes or save anything so let's go back to the browser see what it says about this script um, oh yes this is to remove any unneeded .la files so we can run this now and see if it has actually 
uh, would probably have created some LA files. I've already compiled some um, programs already. So let's run it. And you can see it has actually renamed some files. And you can run this any number of times and it will pick up. You see that time it hasn't picked up anything because it's already processed the LA files that already existed. So that can be a useful tool to run every now and then. Um, it can cause problems. I've had problems where I've had an error compiling and after running this script it's actually fixed, fixed the error so I'll have to bear that in mind um, to make sure um, I remember that as it could fix some problems and indeed it's probably a good idea to run it at the end of every day or maybe when you take a break uh, just to clean up these files, it should be able to as root, yeah, run it on its own because user sbin is in the roots path, so that should be fine to run like that, as you can see. So if I go back to my graphical browser on my local machine, that's that tab dealt with, so I'm going to shut that down. And the next bit I'm going to do is this script here for um, looking for non-conforming manual, page, manual pages so um, I don't particularly worry about this but I'll show you how we can add this in because it hasn't got a complete script to enter uh, to create this um, this script uh, we can basically do it similar to what we've done with this um, With this script here, just uh, create a file in SBIN. It's probably as good a place as any. Um, it would probably, probably only be root. Um, although, is that why they've not? Yeah, this is. It's got severity low here, so this is like not that important. Um, I guess it's probably a root type thing because it's man pages. Um, only the root can install man pages, although other people can read them. Um, so, um, arguably, you may want to put this in user bin possibly to let users access it. So, maybe we'll do that. Put it in user bin. And then we want to give it a file name. So, as I said, there's not a complete script in that, it doesn't create the file for us. Uh, but it does mention that they've, they've referred to it as a checkman.sh script. So let's type that in and create this script. And then all we need to do is go to this chapter in the links browser. So it's called chapter two. Uh, sorry, it's called locale related issues in chapter two. So if I go back here, select the terminal with the um, links browser. Now I'm going to press backspace to get a history of all the links I've accessed so far and these are in order so you can see the first link is this one here press the up arrow I went to that link and then I went to that link and so on so I'm going to go um, back one to get the contents and then go to the locale related issues which is the link that I want to go to say yes for this certificate go to the bottom where this script was and there it is there oops there it is there you can see so part of it again is split over two screens so i need to copy these two go back to the first terminal um, press i to insert new line and just paste it back to the fifth virtual terminal press spacebar for the next page and then just copy the script you can see it's actually in different color which helps uh, but you'll find that some of the commands and things we use aren't actually in a different color. It depends on the HTML in the web page and it depends on how links interprets it. We should just be okay to paste that in there. That looks good. You can see the comments uh, together at the top. The only thing that looks like it's done is taken some indentation and it doesn't look like it's formatted it correctly. So that's a bit unfortunate. So it does mean that any scripts we copy and paste, it looks like we're going to have to just um, modify these. 
Um, I've actually done a mistake there. You'll see that it's put in tab. So if you see, um, if I press the right arrow key once, you see there's a tab there. It's jumped once. So it looks like the tabs have been inserted by something. But the script itself has got spaces for the indentations. You can see there the spaces. So it looks like we just need to delete one tab here. Uh, one tab there. Oh, there's another tab there. Uh, let's go back and look, see how it is actually formatted. Alright, oh, so it looks like there's just one indentation apart from this. Uh, there's a second indentation here. So I need to get rid of the spaces here. Oops. Uh, get rid of these tabs here. So these are spaces. So I'll get rid of four spaces there. That means that's indented correctly. So I guess I can just stay in this column here until oops, it's the indentation is correct. Just keep pressing the delete button. So maybe it's via that's looked at the strings that are being pasted in and then uh, putting in its own indentation. So I'd imagine that would be on the left and that would be on the left. Let's just check to see how it's formatted. Yes, it is. That's OK. And then the last line, it doesn't need to be blank. It's up to you whether you leave that blank or not. I'm going to delete mine. So I'll escape colon X to save and exit. So that's created that script file now. Let's just read, go back and read about it. Issue the following command and modify it if it's not in your path environment very well. It should be because we put it in user bin and it should be accessible by an ordinary user when we uh, create an ordinary user account. So I'll put that in there and this will run through. All oh, right, okay, so I've got to make it um, executable by the looks of it. Um, doesn't actually tell us to do that there, but if you right, yeah. So let's go back. Let's minus L. Let's just look at that file. You can see it's got read write access to the owner and read for everybody else. So I'm just going to change the uh, mode. Did that have? No, it didn't have the change mode, right? Okay. It was the previous command, the previous script we did that had the change mode. So change mode, user plus X to make the user access executable on that file and press enter. Now if I just check that that's been added correctly you can see I've now got an X for the user so it means the user which is root can execute that script whereas previously it couldn't. So if I recall that command, the find command you can see it's now running and I presume these are pages, we'll have to read that's while that's running, let's read what it says. LFX expects the manual pages that are in the language specific, usually 8 bit encoding, are specified on the LFS MANDB page. However, some packages install translate manual pages in UTF 8 encoding, e.g., Shadow already dealt with, or manual pages in language not in the table. Not all BLFS packages have been audited for conformance with the requirements put in LFS. Um, the large majority have been checked and fixes placed in the book for packages known to install non-conforming manual pages. If you find a manual page installed by any of the BLFS packages that is obviously in the wrong encoding, please remove or convert it as it needed and report it to the BLFS team as a bug. You can check your system for any non-conforming manual pages by copying the following short shell script to some accessible location. And then issue the following command. So I guess it's telling us that these are in UTF-8 and 
from what this says, that's um, probably not appropriate. Yeah, because it says that they're in some language specific, usually 8-bit encoding. But because they're in UTF, that's why these have come up. I think that's what it means. So it's saying that these might not um, display correctly. So like the Italian version of the man command might look incorrect. So if that's important to you, then that script will show you those um, man pages that are not conformant to the way that LFS does them. So, as I say, that's um, for for people who that might, that might be important to. Um, but apart from that, it's not really a, a deal breaker, as it says there. It's a a low severity issue, so you can skip this if you wish to. So that's that done. I'm going to close that tab down now, and you can see we've come on to the um, third chapter and I'll be going through each of these and just dealing with things that I consider important to show um, and I'll ignore other things but I'm not going to be going through it on this screen I might get this browser up just to read something and might, might make it a bit easier to read or to view but um, apart from that I'm going to be doing most of the um, reading of the manual now in, in the links browser so I'm going to press the backspace to go back to the contents again and go to this link here. And then start by reading these options. Unfortunately, I'm gonna, it's going to ask me every time about the um, certificates. I'm just going to have to remember to press yes each time it prompts me. <laughs> 